out, folks. Hello. <laughs> Pastor Buck. And Pastor Nikki. We're here on a Blue Ridge Mountain where my mother's buried right behind us. And I have a lot of family that's in the cemetery here in Alderson, West Virginia. Yes. Up here on top of a Blue Ridge Mountain. You know, I think it's just wonderful that uh, that I'm able to do this. My mother never got to saw me give my life to the Lord. But I know that from heaven she can see. And I know she's pleased, but what joy to be here <coughs> where she is buried and a lot of my family. Amen. And to have her little boy that's 76 years old yes. come and have the good news coming from this cemetery. And you know what? Being in a cemetery makes us think about death and eternal life. Yes, and you know, we all need to stop just a minute and say, where would I go into eternity if I was to die today? <laughs> and you know, we just have to ask ourselves that question because when you take your last breath, it'll be too late. Right. So why don't you lead us in prayer, Pastor Nikki? Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time to bring the good news that you've made a way home to be with you forever. And Father, for those that are listening today that aren't sure, they're saying, God, where are you? God, who are you? God, am I supposed to follow you with all my heart? If you'll just ask, if you'll seek him with all your heart, he will open up your understanding to the fact that we are sinners apart from him and that he sent his son to die in our place that we might be forgiven. Our sin would be washed away by his precious blood and we could be with him forever. Father, may those who are listening be sure that they are on their way home to be with you forever. Thank you, Jesus, for paving the way. We love you. You're our best friend. You're our brother. And we look forward to the day when you'll come for us. We thank you for the Holy Ghost that you've placed in our, our hearts, our lives, that we may be re resurrected on that day. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, we have so much to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. Tell them about a song. Pastor. We want to sing a song that says there's a whole lot of people going home. And just recently, three of our dearest friends went to be with Jesus. We know, we have assurance that they're home safe. May you be home safe. Oh, oh, oh. 
ago by a man named David Engels. And he's talking about when the Lord Jesus comes, and we'll be talking about it in a few minutes, those that are in these graves behind me, including my mother, which is right there, her remains, these graves will open up. And the Bible says that the spirit and the soul will be coming back with Jesus and in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, when the last trump sounds, these graves will open up and these mortal ashes will be turned into a glorified body that we can live in and spend eternity with our Father in Jesus Christ. Amen. And you know, we're living in a time when people need to be thinking about that. We're living in a time when people are going about just doing like they were in the days of Noah not paying attention that something great's going to happen. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I, it's in my spirit and so many other brothers and sisters in the Lord, something big, really big, is fixing to come across this whole world. Yes. And I believe it's a return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I want to be ready. And the Bible says that those which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the air to be with the Lord forevermore. Yeah. And then the Bible explains that we'll be coming back with the Lord to live and reign after the tribulation. Amen. Where Jesus Christ, when he sets his foot in Jerusalem, every knee will bow Amen. and every tongue will confess to the fact that Jesus, to the glory of God the Father, that Jesus is Lord of all. Amen. Pastor Nick has got Amen. something to, to uh, read for us, the good news today. Yes. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and beyond. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So, when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Yes, yes. Sir. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, 
for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Pastor Buck, isn't that a wonderful word? What Good hope. Word. Praise what the hope Lord. we have. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to just uh, expound on this promise, this promise that comes from God, that even though that we're in the flesh, and many of us, many of us are going to be alive when the Lord returns, but there's also going to be many of us that's going to be, if you could see this mountain rolls, this Blue Ridge Mountain rolls, and it's full of graves. It's full of ashes and bones. And I want to tell you right now that it's so important that we understand that there is a life after this. There is eternal life. And the Bible says that we have the free will. We have the free will to believe, receive, repent, be born again of the Spirit of God, or we put it off and reject it. And then... The Bible says that when we take our last breath, the spirit and soul goes out into eternity. Folks, I'm not talking about just a few years. I'm not talking about a thousand years. I'm not talking about a million years. I'm saying for eternity, and we have to make that choice while we have our spirit and soul in this body. Amen. It's a mystery. Paul says it's a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. That means that when Jesus comes in the rapture, that means that there'll be a lot of us, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, that will be alive. The Bible says, though, that those that are in the graves, that the graves will open up. Now, that's a mystery. But Paul says, we shall all be changed. Amen. And that's a promise that from this body, I look at my arms and all, and I'm on blood thinners and all that kind of stuff, and I get bruised up, and my, my skin is getting wrinkled, and I know that my days are numbered. But I'm still believing that the Lord could come back today. And if he comes back today, then I'm going to be jerked up into the air, Pastor Nicky and me. And you know what? It's not going to happen mm -hmm. until these graves open up. Oh, and yeah. the dead in Christ shall rise. Now listen. The ones that's in these graves is not in the graves, but God is going to take the remains of whatever's in these graves. Wherever someone's being cremated, their ashes have been spread out. If they're a child of God, God's going to turn that into immortality. Amen. Paul says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. That means that we don't have time to get ready. That means that we don't have time to say, Oh, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins and come into my life. Change my life. I will follow you. No, it means that in the twinkling of an eye, and there's going to be at the trumpet will sound and blam, in the mm -hmm. twinkling of an eye. And the Bible says that death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. Death is swallowed up in victory. I tell you, I've done so many funerals and so many memorials and went to so many viewings and you know I don't like death but I know this one thing that those that are in Christ shall never die Amen. we shall fall asleep if we leave this body and open our eyes to be absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord Amen. so it's important for you today is to say to yourself what would I give in exchange for my soul Will I, will I exchange the pleasures of this life, the pleasures of sin? Will I exchange all of that for my soul to go out into eternity and wind up in the devil's hell? No. Uh, you're worth so much more than that. No. God sent his son so that you would not have to do that, that yet you could be born again and come into the family of God. Death, where is your sting? Oh, grave. Where is your victory? I know that my mama, her ashes is right behind me, her bones. And I know that one day that she's coming back with the Lord. And those, mm. that grave is going to open up. And mm. this beautiful creation of immortality, all of this is going to happen at once. 
and we which are alive and remain. Wouldn't it be something if Jesus was to come right now Amen. and I could meet my mother in the air Ooh. and I could see Jesus meet him in the air? Yes. So Paul says, but thanks be to God, which gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way that we can get by the sting of death and the, the victory of the grave. That yeah. we can get by, but it's going through Jesus Christ. And so today I want to say, I want to say these words that Paul said in the 58th verse of the 15th chapter. Therefore, my beloved... Brethren, sisters, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now God spoke to Pastor Nicky a while back and said, we need to have some good news from a graveyard. And so I got to thinking, I thought, what better place than Alderson, West Virginia, my beloved hometown, and this cemetery that's just up the hill from Alderson, what better place than to stand by my mother's remains and tell you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And no one goes to the Father except through him. Now, you may not believe that. You may think that you can, you can uh, live a, a good life and get to heaven. But, you know, it's going to be sad when you find out you were wrong. It's going to be sad when we realize that we went after something that that had deceived us into believing there was some other way. Amen. But I want to tell you, with love, be steadfast. Don't be unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. That's what Pastor Nicky and I are doing here today. We left our beloved place up in Indian Meadows to come and get away for a few days and just... Uh, we thought we might just uh, relax in, at the Greenbrier River. Well, we're going to have some time, but God had some work for us. Yeah. Today, he had us here to tell you that he loves you and that any time now, any time, and it's going to happen so quick, it's going to happen so quick, we need to be ready. Mm -hmm. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, because something big and great's coming to this old world, mm -hmm. and I believe it's a rapture of God's church and I want to tell you if you're not saved today then you have the free will to make the choice that you're going to say I need to get saved eternity is forever and I want to be in that place that God has has built that city that city and a new heaven and new earth and most of all a new glorified body I want that. Amen. I want to be in the presence of God the Son and God the Father for yes. eternity. Yes. And all you have to do is believe Amen. and receive. Repent of your sins and be willing to turn and follow Jesus. Would you do that today? Amen. Would you do that? I'm standing here in, the, in, in a graveyard begging you to consider that this may be one of your stones, headstones out through here. And are you ready? It's too late for these folks, but it's not too late for you. Amen. <clears throat> Christian, I want to say this to you. There's still work to be done. Amen. There is still things that God wants us to accomplish. And I believe, <coughs> excuse me, I believe this is one today. I'm standing in a cemetery, a graveyard, pleading and begging with you to Come to Jesus. Whatever you do, come to Jesus and let him change your life and give you eternal life. Amen. Give you the abundant life. Amen. And then one day, as the old song says, I'll fly away. Yeah. I'll fly away. Once again, I'm begging you from the bottom of my heart, if you're not right with God, you need to get right. Right now is your opportunity. God said, I won't force you. I'm giving you the free will to choose. If you choose Jesus, you choose life. Amen. If you do not choose Jesus, then you have, done, have, have made the choice that you'd rather have the pleasures in this life and spend eternity in hell. 
God don't want you in a devil's hell. He, he created hell for the devil and those that followed him. And if you don't choose Jesus, you're following the devil. That's right. So let's all choose life. Yes. Let's enjoy what God has given us here on this earth. It's not so bad. It's not so bad. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I'll fly away. Oh, yes, I'll fly away.